good morning all and happy makar sankranti to everyone myself dr deepali amle hod and professor csms ayurved college aurangabad welcome you all in this today's 24th naidani ki 24 webinar organized by rognidan and vikruti vigyan pg association this webinar is approved by mci mci in mumbai the topic of today's webinar is pyrometry diagnostic interpretation and we all know that gold international copd guidelines and national guidelines advise pyrometry as the gold standard for accurate and repeatable measurement of lung functions also it is helpful in making the diagnosis of breathlessness and for screening of occupational and environmental disorders and you know all that this is all these all respiratory topics are included in our rognidan pg final year syllabus so to explain the importance of spirometry in copd and how to perform it correctly and how to interpret its result we requested our esteemed guest dr akash balki sir to focus on spirometry diagnostic interpretations for this webinar our chairperson is Dr. Ramesh Vagmare sir he is hod and professor vidarbha ayurved mahavidyalay amravati before proceeding to this webinar i request uh, dr darshana ubale ma'am assistant professor tilak ayurved mahavidyalay pune to make a tour around our rvpg association because we should know all about our rvpg organization towards you ma'am Uh, thank you so much, Doctor Amle, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are audible. Yes. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so I am here to uh, give you a brief introduction about RVPGA. Uh, so this organization, RVPGA, that is Rog Nidhan Vikruti Vigyan PG Association for Pathology and Radio Diagnosis, was formed in the year 2016 under the able and dynamic leadership. of dr subhash wage with the aim to uh, give the legal status of pathologists and radiologists to the pgs of rog nidan our organization is delhi registered under societies uh, act of 1860 at charity commissioners office nagpur post graduate students teachers of rog nidan evam vikruti vigyan and chaya v kiran vigyan can become uh, our member Ours is the only organization which is fighting for the lawful rights of Rognidan and Vikruti Vigyan PGs. Even the NCSM had also directed State of Maharashtra to consider RV PGA as stakeholder in the constitution of pathology regulatory body of the state. RV PGA is pursuing this matter uh, with state and central government. And not only this. RUPJ is constantly pursuing the implementation of NCSM salary structures in all the private Ayurvedic colleges across the nation. All the communications and details are uploaded on our website www.rvpjnagpur.com. Now let's have a a, a glance of uh, activities of this organization. So, uh, uh, RUPJ regularly conducts. Uh, the online webinars and offline seminars both on national and international platforms so far now we have conducted 23 national webinars on different diagnostic topics and a national conference on x-ray diagnosis uh, at nagpur last year in the month of november 2023 uh, we also conduct the hands on training programs for pgs at our partner nabl accredited pathology laboratories which are at nagpur Mumbai and Pune. Uh, we have a uh, plan in upcoming events. Uh, the national level two days microbiological hands-on training program for our PGs and teachers on 9th of March 2024 at Nagpur. So please join everyone and register for the same. Uh, we have our publication of research papers of Nidan uh, students and faculties and in our peer-reviewed International Journal of Diagnostics and Research (IJDR). Uh, interested uh, PG scholars, PhD scholars, teachers, faculties can visit our journal sites www.ijtrindia.com. Uh, our journal is enlisted in eight databases. Two issues have already been published. 
uh, edited book volume series through our international publications RIPI, which is registered in Government of India's ISBN portal. Those who want to contribute uh, uh, the book chapters can visit RIPI website www.rvpgaip.com. We have published all India Rognidan PG thesis book uh, consisting of all the Rognidan PG titles from 1985 to 2023 for the easy references of our PGs and faculties. We are giving legal fight for the issues of Rognidan and Vikruti Vigyan PGs at appropriate forums. We also have our YouTube channel and Facebook page where you can see our educational activities from past and lives. So uh, do join the RVPJ uh, and uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, it's my immense pleasure to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Akash Palki, sir. Sir is well-known pulmonologist of Nagpur city. Sir has done his MBBS, DNB and diploma in tuberculosis and chest diseases. Sir has a fellowship of American College of Chest Physicians. He is director of Shri Hospital and Critical Care Center at Nagpur. So, avoiding further delay, I welcome our distinguished pulmonologist, Dr. Akash Balki, sir, on, on behalf of Rognidan and Vikruti Vigyan PG Association, I request, sir, to guide us regarding spirometry diagnostic interpretation. Towards you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And uh, today's mostly our topic would be uh, 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 spirometry and its role uh, in uh, clinical practice. Uh, just wanted to confirm whether the slides are visible to you. Yes, sir, but you can uh, make it as a uh, slideshow presentation, sir. That is the reason I'm searching here only. Just... Slide show presentation make a side. Sir, I think it is on the lower toolbar. Yeah, toolbar is a side. So, this is like a toolbar. One either the slide show to the slide presentation. Ah, did you got it? Yes. So when we when we look after uh, thank you when we look after spirometry and uh, this is a very interesting um... sir excuse me sir your okay. screen is not uh, sir fully visible ah uh, okay So can you go to the slideshow option, left hand side, upper yes, upper corner? Wait a minute. Yes, screen is the Slideshow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slideshow. It is it is partially visible right now. Uh, it's partially visible, uh -huh. but if you go to a slideshow option and start from the beginning, okay. the le left hand side, uh, upper corner. Left hand side, upper corner, yes. Uh, uh, yes, home, after home. No, no, uh, uh, after home, there will there will be uh, some few buttons in the straight line. 
now now it is visible uh, 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 insert design animation and slide show this will be this will figure there right. go go uh, go to slide show when yes click click, <laughs> click on the uh, yes from uh, beginning no, no, from beginning from beginning from beginning yes yes click i have done that now it's visible uh, it's coming now it's visible no sir it's not visible as a full slide show it is totally visible i don't know what is going on uh i think i will do the sharing again yes sir yeah you you share me again dekh bhai sir Sir, on the lower bar, on very right side, there are three icons yeah, next more. to the sixty percent that we can see. So right. you can click that button as well. More me breakout. Sir, or you can increase the size of the slides, sir. No, the slides are full. Uh, means as far as I am seeing here, okay, sixty percent. You mean yeah. to see this? Okay, now. Ah, uh, now is it? Yeah, it is. It's it's okay now. It's okay now. Sir, yeah. Uh, so just just larger one, sir. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. It's it's okay. It's okay. You okay, can start. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, thank you. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. And uh, today's our topic would be spirometry and the clinical importance of spirometry in a regular clinical practice. Being a pulmonologist, uh, our uh, main uh, uh, understanding would be ki how to uh, interpret this spirometry and how to differentiate between asthma copd and any other lung conditions now why i have shown this slide first slide is if you see this ecg i think it you can very clearly understand this is an ecg of a patient who is having a clear cut st elevation and any person can now tell with seeing this ecg that this has a myocardial infarction right so when we go further but when it comes to spirometry now again same lung function uh, spirometry uh, graphs are available with you but now uh, it's not very easy for us to understand ki what is the uh, diagnosis here like we used to we we could clearly see ki in ecg the mi was clearly visible because we have been taught lot of um, uh, mi in ecgs but this spirometry uh, is not is uh, not touched actually and that is the reason if i show this this uh, spirometry uh, graph it is not clearly visible ki what exactly is happening here now if you go further these are so many number of uh, parameters fvc fe1 now this becomes a complicated issue so what exactly we are dealing with what is spirometry and how to interpret this is the basic of today's talk so what is the role of spirometry mostly it is to diagnose the airway obstruction now the gold guidelines this is these are the copd or a gold guidelines in respiratory conditions where airway obstruction is basically done on spirometry only to demonstrate the reversibility of obstruction to grade the severity of obstruction to identify the other obstructive lung diseases and different diseases like restrictive lung disease assessing the response to the treatment follow up in surgical evaluation we do spirometry and it also helps in smoking cessation clinics so as we all understand what are the functions of lungs it nourishes the body with oxygen which generates 90% of our body's energy these lungs they excrete around 350 liters of carbon dioxide daily they need patent airways and functional alveoli to help the gas diffusion and obstructive airway disease are one of the most common diagnosis that a doctor makes in a clinical practice so to introduce spirometry it doesn't move ppt gets stuck 
I don't know what's the issue today because here on my side it is moving very well. It's not moving there. No, sir. PPTs are not moving, uh, sir. Sir, do one thing. Click on the PPT and then uh, go on the scroll bar. Click on the PPT now. Where is this option? Now uh, this this issue happens with many. Uh, uh, click on the uh, PPT uh, slide and. Then go to the scroll bar, down down scroll bar. Okay, okay. Now it's moving. Because here everything is moving. Uh, it's going fine here. I have done the same thing. Now? Uh, not no, moving. Uh, Hemant, uh, could you please help? Yeah, sir. Sir, can you please share it again, sir? Uh, okay, can be done. Sir, please check uh, Windows background slideshow is enabled or not. Windows background slideshow. Yes. So minimize the video. Minimize? Reshare the video. It's all done. Can you see it? Ah, it's all done. Ah, it's all done. Stop sharing the video. Stop sharing the video. Uh, screen share here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sir. Okay. Just I'll see whether it is moving on. Yeah, okay, sir. Mark's moving? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. sir. Please okay. continue, sir. Yeah. So, as we have understood that pyrometry uh, is a gold standard for COPD diagnosis. And uh, this underuse leads to inaccurate COPD or asthma diagnosis. Widespread uptake has been limited by concerns over technical performance by operators, difficulty in interpretation of the results, lack of approval of local training courses, and lack of evidence of the benefits. So, what is this pyrometry? Spirometry is a method of assessing lung function by measuring the total volume of air the patient can expel from the lungs after maximum inhalation. Very simple uh, definition. Assessing the lung function by measuring the total volume of air. Once we blow out, so what is the volume of air that is being blown out? The maximum volume that is coming out, that is being measured in the spirometry. A simple, uh, simple thing to understand. So why we perform spirometry? As I have told, it measures the airway obstruction, air flow obstruction, confirm the presence of air flow obstruction, assess the severity of air flow obstruction, detect the air flow obstruction in mostly smokers, monitor our disease progression. It tells of us about the response to therapy. The FEV1 measurement is important here and also in pre-operative cases where we have to give fitness to the patient. May, uh, other additional uses are to uh, make a diagnosis and assess the severity in a range of other respiratory conditions, distinct, distinguish between obstructive lung disease and the restrictive lung disease. In workplaces like occupational environment, we do regular spirometries, fitness to some of the diverse and pre-employment screening also. There are many different types of spirometers. These are the bellows, electronic desktop spirometers, small hand. So many, many different types of spirometers are there. One measures flow, one measures volume. One are small spirometers only give FEV1 measurement. So this is a, 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 a routine spirometry that we use. It is a flow measuring spirometry. It has a, a, a computer screen. You can see a lady blowing into the device and you have to measure key how much air can be blown out in a particular uh, breath. So this is a basic of spirometry where we are measuring the flow that is coming out from our mouth. The flow is coming out from our lungs and in one breath, how much flow is coming out that is measured on the screen that is being visible there. You can see the graph there. We will come what we are actually measuring there. So these are different types of spirometers available. 
These are the smaller ones which measures only FEV1 that is expiratory volume in one second. Again, we'll come to it. So we, what are the different parameters? I showed you the first slide where the uh, spirometric graph was there. And in that graph, there were so many measurements. So what are these basic measurements? One is, I told you, we are blowing out in the machine. So when we are blowing out, it is total air that is coming out. So FEV1 is the force expiratory volume in one second. So first second blow that is coming out, it is FEV1. The volume of air expired in the first second of the blow. Very simple to understand. All PGs can very well understand this. The first second blow is a FEV1. Now what is FVC? These are very important parameters. You have to carefully listen because this forms the basic of spirometry. What is FVC? FVC is force vital capacity. The total volume of air. Now remember this definition. Total volume of air that can be forcibly excelled in one breath. This is total volume. FEV1 was one second. Then the ratio FEV1 by FVC. The fraction of air exhaled in the first second relative to the total volume exhaled. So FEV1 we got in one second. FVC we got the total one and the ratio. So these three forms the basic of spirometry. Then moving further to the other parameters that is vital capacity. The volume of full breath exhaled in the patient's own time and not force. That was force. We blow out forcefully. This is a normal breath. In normal breath, the volume of full breath exhaled. This is slightly greater than the FVC, particularly in COPD patients. Now the other parameters is FEV6. Very well can we understand that force expiratory volume in 6 seconds often approximates the FVC. Again to tell you further, when we blow out continuously in one breath, generally the seconds comes to 6 seconds. So this can be also seen when we are seeing the parameters in FEV6. So FEV6 is can be total volume also. Another is mid expiratory flow rate that is MEFR derived from mid portion of flow volume curve but is not useful in COPD diagnosis. Again, when the patient is blowing full to 6 seconds, the middle part that is 3 to 4 seconds that comes the mid expiratory flow rate. So all spirometry when we say this becomes, this chart becomes the basic. As I have told, this is a vital capacity is full air. This, this is the tidal volume. Now, now just want to uh, uh, make you understand what is tidal volume. This is a normal breathing. Inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation. This is a normal. This is what a force breathing, right? And the one full force breathing in and out is a total vital capacity. So this is a total vital capacity and this is a normal tidal breathing. We will come further to the graphs. So what can be the patterns in spirometry? It can be a normal one. It can be an obstructive one. It can be a restrictive one. And it can be a mixed obstructive and restrictive. Now what is this? Why, why we are calling obstructive? Why we are calling restrictive? We have now just studied ki what is the volume of air that we are blowing out in the device. Now the patterns. That are the different patterns. So the pattern wise if you see spirometry, how will you describe what are the spirometry patterns? Predicted normal values. Now, if I blow in the device and some 60 years person also blow in the device, so how we can understand whether these conditions what we are blowing is normal or an abnormal. So we have to have some comparison where we can understand for my age, for my height, for, for a male or a female person or for a regular ethnic origin, what is the normal for me? For example, if my age, height and my if male or female, whatever it is, these are the normal parameters that are been already um, established in the devices that we are using. For example, if 
my FEV1 is to be normal value would be for example say 60 percent. So the machine as per my age and height will calculate my FEV1. Now when I blow then there comes the comparison. So the, how we are comparing between this is a uh, shown in the chart. This, this, if you see the chart here, this can be both male persons say this can be of a same age and they are blowing in the uh, device or a spirometry device. So how will we understand ki whether this spirometry is normal or an abnormal? So because his height is much more than, the, than the, this one. So there is a normal prediction values to all the uh, age groups, all the heights that we are doing. So FEV1 normal predicted would be more than 80% or equal to normal, uh, equal to 80%. That is a normal value. FBC again predicted would be more than 80% or equal to 80%. And the ratio is 0.7 to 0.8 depending upon the age. So these are the normal parameters where we have to have when we blow in the spirometry, FEV1, FVC, everything should be more than 80%. And the ratio should be more than 0.7. We'll come to the ratio again. So just see this curve. This is a volume and a time curve. I am asking the patient to blow from here. Patient has blown, exhaled from here. It has started exhaling, 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 and you can see the graph. It is going, 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 going till six seconds. Till six seconds, <clears throat> patient can easily blow, but not in every patient where there is a disease. So this is a normal pattern. A uh, patient is blowing till six seconds, and you can see the graph here. Now, if you see here the calculation, yes, a difficult calculation as far as this. But in regular devices, we get this calculation automatically as per the softwares. So what is FEV1? I told you FEV1 is exhalation in one second. Patient ne yaha se exhale kiya and you can see the volume here, a minute here. So one minute would be here. So FEV1 would be four liters. You can clearly see. Now I told you about FPC. Total volume of air that is here is exhaling till six seconds. FPC was full volume in, in 6 seconds. Now XPC graph is straight here. Means from here if you calculate the 6 second, if you calculate this comes to FPC is 5 liters. Very clearly understood FEV1 4 liters, FPC 5 liters. This is a normal one and see the ratio. FEV1 by FPC. I have done this calculation and it is pointed. As I have told you, this should be 0.7 to 0.8 in a normal individual. Very simple to be understood. A graph of spirometry where you are seeing this is a volume graph. What happens in an obstructive pattern? That was all a normal 1 second, 6 second, FEV1, FBC, the ratios. Now the obstructive pattern. See this. If you see, again I have seen, this is a normal. This is a normal for any age group what he is blowing in that spirometer. What happens in an obstructive pattern? Patient is blowing, 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 but his generate his generation of exhalation, the air that is to be exhaled is not sufficient. So he cannot blow up to that level. Now he is blowing from here, going on, going on till 6 seconds. Now see the calculations. Now FEV1, one second I told you before, see the one second, see this. So one second patient, if you say, the FE1 would be less than 2, that is 1.8 liters. Then I told you about FPC for 6 seconds. 6 seconds, if you see the volume, it is somewhere 3.2 liters. And then the ratio 0.56. I have told you 0.7 and 0.8 is the normal one. In the obstructive pattern, you are seeing less than 0.7 and 0.8. Very clearly understood, 0.56 is an obstructive pattern. And you can see from the volume graph here on. So, this is the volume graph that I have shown in the spirometry. COPD is confirmed by post bronchodilator. We'll come to what is post bronchodilator FEV1 by FPC. It should be less than 0.7. 
So it was in our case of example, it was 0.56. That shows a obstructive pattern. Post bronchodilator FEV1 by FVC measured 15 minutes after 400 micrograms of salbutamol or equivalent. Now what happens in a spirometry? First we do a normal exhalation in the device. As I have shown in the graph, patient is blowing for one second, then he is keep on blowing for five, six seconds and we get the graph. We have identified that patient has obstructive pattern in the graph. Now what we will do? We will see whether patient has reversibility or not or whether patient will respond to the therapy or not. Now how to identify that? What we will do? We will, after we blow, we had blown in the spirometer, we will give this patient salbutamol, that is a simple inhaler, 400 micrograms are the 4 pop, 100 micrograms is the 1 pop. So per 4 pop of salbutamol we will give to this patient and we will wait for 15 minutes. Alternatively, we can also give nebulized salbutamol also and we can wait to 12 to 15 minutes and then we repeat the test to see the uh, response to the salbutamol. So this is called a spirometry reversibility testing. It can be done on the first visit if no diagnosis is being made. Best done as a planned procedure. Pre and post bronchodilator test requires a minimum of 15 minutes that I have discussed. Post bronchodilator only saves time but does not help to confirm if asthma is present. Short of is already told. So what are the reversibility drugs that we use? Salbutamol is most widely drug used in, in the inhaler form or the nebulization form. That is 200 to 400 micro, microgram. Mostly we use four, four pops with the spacers. Terbutaline, uh, terbutaline can also be used and ipratopium can also be used. But mostly it is salbutamol that is being used. Uh, just... Uh, these are the small uh, key points for the preparation of spirometry. Test should be performed when patients are clinically stable and free from respiratory infection. So this is very important because what happens when we are doing a spirometry of the patient, we have to understand patient doesn't has any upper respiratory or a lower respiratory lung infections or any viral or uh, bacterial infections. Just wanted to, just we have to confirm that. Patient should not have taken inhaled short-acting bronchodilator in the previous six hours. What happens? These patients who are coming to us who are already being diagnosed as asthma or COPD, they are already taking these inhalers. So when they are coming to us, it happens in morning they have taken the dose already. In that case, your spirometry values will differ because any long-acting or any short-acting bronchodilators will have the effect on the airways. So we have to Confirm that patient has not taken his inhalers before doing spirometry. It is 6 hours for uh, uh, salbutamols and 12 hours for uh, formatrol or uh, budesonides. FEV1 should always be measured before a bronchodilator is given. A bronchodilator should be given by MDI through a spacer. Mostly it is recommended. Don't give direct inhalers because that doesn't give the desired result. Depending upon the dose, uh, depending as the bronchodilator dose should be selected to be high on the dose response curve. Possible dosage is mostly 400 microgram, uh, microgram of beta 2 agonist as I have told earlier. The result, pre-bronchodilator spirometry, FEV1, FPC we have measured. What are the final results of spirometry? We have done one test before. We have given four puffs of salbutamol. We have done a repeat test after 15 minutes. So what are the interpretation and what are the result? Final is an increase in FEV1 that is both greater than 200 ml and 12% above the pre bronchodilator FEV1 is considered significant. Now this carries a very significant importance what I have told right now. Ki first you are measuring the FEV1. I have told you in the graph how to measure an FEV1. 
So for example, FEV1 is 60%. For example, and we have given the puffs and 15 minutes we are repeating the FEV1. And this FEV1 now is 80% after giving the puff of salbutamol. So difference is if the difference between FEV1 is more than 12% and the response is good enough to be more than 12%, then it is clinically significant and then we label it as asthma. So how to measure the difference? In the software, it automatically comes. What was the previous FEV1? When we have given the dose, how is the now FEV1? And after the dose, what is the calculated FEV1? These differences are clearly visible in the spirometry graphs. As I have told, patients should not have, I have told the preparation, should not have the, taken the previous bronchodilators. Yes, the result. This was, this was the thing I was talking. The increase in FE1 that is both greater than 200 ml or more than 12% is significant. It, use, it is usually helpful to report the absolute change as well as the percent change from the baseline to set the improvement in the clinical context. <coughs> Sorry. Now, this was obstructive lung disease that I have been talking about. The FE1, FVC, the difference in FE1 and FVC. And what about the restrictive lung disease? It was an obstructive one. Now, it is the restrictive. The commonest restrictive lung disease that we see is an interstitial lung disease which mimics like COPDs, but these are different on the spirometry. Again, here the FEV1 would be normal, that is 80 or more than 1. FVC would be less than 80%. And the ratio what I have been talking would be more than 0.7. Now, you can see again for the restrictive pattern. This was the normal what we had studied. Now, obstructive I had shown you that. Now, see the restrictive pattern. So, patient is blown. He doesn't have enough exhalation to grow till here. He has start, stopped blowing from here only and patient is sustained for 6 seconds. Now see the ratios here. FEV1, 1 second. FEV1, you can see 1.9 liters here. FVC, 2 liters. FVC is, as I have told, 6 seconds may full capacity. We are seeing here, it would be 2 liters. And the ratio is 0.95. Ours was normally 0.7 to 0.8. Ratio is 0.95, much above. There, when we saw the previous obstructive pattern, the ratio was 0.5 only, very less than 0.7. It is more than 0.7. So this is 0.95. Now you can understand what is the restrictive pattern here. So FEV1 was, you can see, FEV1 was 1.9 liters is less than or 80% of the predicted. FVC less than ratio who will be more than 0.7. There can be some patient who can have both this obstructive and restrictive pattern. Just to tell you, it is very difficult to differentiate between the mixed obstructive and the restrictive lung disease because the patterns would be little dicey here. So this is an obstructive and a restrictive pattern. Again, FEV1, very small, patient has stopped blowing here only. So FE1 is 0.5 ml only. FVC 6 second, 1.5 liters, and the ratio is very less. So if you see the ratio, 0.3 is an obstructive well. We have studied less than 0.7. But FEV1, if you see, even that is less, and FVC is more. So this is a mixed pattern. As I've told, it is very difficult to diagnose by spirometry alone. Full respiratory function tests are usually required. That is body plethysmography. This was a volume loop. Now this is a flow volume loop. Usually flow volume loop, uh, loop that we see on the spirometer is mostly used nowadays. It is a desktop spirometer and it adds more information than volume time curve. Now, yes, this is, this is the another spirometry pattern. This usually I use in my clinical practice. This is Expiratory flow rate, yeah, patient has started blowing from here, exhaling, 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 exhaling till here. Then patient is still, uh, still exhaling, exhaling, exhaling till here. Patient is inhaling now from here. Yeah, the patient is sas vapas li and vapas li here. This is a standard curve of a flow volume loop. 
So, uh, so if you see, this is again, I don't know, there, there is no plot of seconds here, but this is a fixed second. When the patient is exhaling, 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 exhaling till six seconds here, and this is the flow volume loop of total six seconds. So, these are normal. I have to understand, we all have to understand this, this uh, pattern because from this we can identify obstructive patterns. Now, see the pattern here in obstruction, we saw that. These are severe obstruction and these are restrictive pattern. Looking at the graph itself, we can understand this, key, what patient is having. Now, if you see, if you see this curve, this is a normal curve when patient is exhaling. And if you see this curve, this is going downside. If you this, see this curve, this is going downside. We call this, uh, it as a chair pattern. If I see in the flow volume loop, if I see this chair pattern, I can very clearly see Without looking to the values of FV1 and FVC, I can clearly tell this is an obstructive pattern. You can see this severe obstruction and you can fit on in your eyes that this is the pattern of an obstructive lung disease. It can clearly tell you. Now, what is restrictive pattern? This I have shown you as an obstructive. Restriction, what happens? Patient blows here and fast exhalation is still here only. Patient is not able to exhale like this still here. So this is a, uh, a, a, a tom pattern that you say, patient, uh, if you see this pattern, we can clearly understand between this one and this one. These are obstructive and these are restrictive pattern. So this was the volume loop uh, that we have seen before, obstructive restrictive pattern and the mixed pattern. The practical session. A uh, spirometry technician with me, I have almost, I think, three to four spirometry technicians are working with me. They are not at all happy with uh, working with the spirometry because it involves a lot, uh, lot of efforts. Training is essential for, we have to train them. There is a uh, chest research foundation, uh, foundation in Pune where uh, these spirometry courses are regularly been going on. Dr. Sandeep uh, Sarvi is uh, the mentor there. And these uh, spirometry technicians trainings are regularly been going on. We do uh, send our spirometer technician uh, how to train our patients, how to make them more competent for the uh, test, how to make them comfortable. All this is very important. So training to the spirometry technician because patient is already already a deceased patient. Patient is already having curve. Then you are asking them to blow for six seconds. It is, we have to generate that six seconds from the patient. So training is must for any of this spirometry, what we do. This is all about that. And uh, a subject should rest for 10 minutes before performing spirometry. We use routine as I told, beta 2 agonist, that is salbutamol, or uh, long acting beta agonist that formatol can be used. Again, important to understand, patients should avoid caffeine and cigarette smoking 30 minutes before performing spirometry. Because these caffeines or tea or coffee, what you say, this acts as a bronchodilator. So your spirometry result can vary. So we ask our patient not to have tea or coffee half an hour before the procedure. Very important to prepare our patient. We have to explain the purpose of the test and demonstrate the procedure. Record the patient age, height and gender to enter on the spirometer. Note when the bronchodilator was last used. Have the patient sitting comfortably on the chair. Loosen any tight clothing. Empty the bladder beforehand if needed. This is very important points which we have to demonstrate to our patient. We have already made the checklist before the spirometry technicians and we ask them to tick the checklist before they go with the procedure. Again, I will tell you how to perform the procedure. Breathe in until the lungs are full. Full SAS low. This is a full a breathe. Hold the breath. Seal the lips tightly around the clean mouthpiece. The mouthpiece is in your mouth. Blast the air out as forcibly and as fast as possible provides lot of encouragement. Jor se saas fuko and completely to, you have to blow out. So you have to encourage the patient. For this encouragement, now the softwares have balloons with us. So we tell, 
ये बलून्स को फुलाओ सी द बलून इन ऑन द स्क्रीन एंड सेल्स कि ब्लो आउट ब्लो आउट तो व्हेन वी ब्लो आउट द बलून्स गेट ये जो जो बलून्स गेट फिल्ड विद एयर सो इन द स्पायरो इन द ग्राफ आल्सो यू विल सी द चेंजेस इन द ऑन द स्क्रीन यू सी द बलून इज फिलिंग विद द एयर एंड पेशेंट गेट्स दैट एनकरेजमेंट यस ही कैन डू दैट एंड कंटिन्यू ब्लोइंग इज रिक्वायर्ड इन द इन द बलून्स और द डिवाइस एंड व्हेन टिल द लंग्स गेट एम्प्टी watch the patient during the blow to assure the lips are sealed yes this is again very important when the patient is blowing out many at a times it happens that the air gets leaked from the mouthpiece that is there so we have to instruct the patient ki you have to assure the lips are totally sealed check to determine if any adequate trace have been has been achieved repeat the procedure at least two or three times what happens when we blow in one blow the reading comes fe1 fe is the ratio but our uh, experience and the book says you have to do it for three times when we do it for three times the mean of three fe1 comes uh, in the final uh, the report that is generated the mean of three fe we see we see fe c and the mean of everything comes so at least good three blows are required this is the three blows patient this is a normal one patient is blowing three times and you can see the three curves possible side effect what happens when we ask patient to breathe uh, out continuously light headedness thoda sa chakkar patient always tell thoda headache hua chakkar aaya sometimes patient gets red in the face sometimes we can get a vasovagal also patient may i have seen some patients getting sudden collapse so we have to take uh, take uh, precautions transient urinary incontinence is also seen in many of the copd patient and in recent uh, any any heart surgeries uh, uh, or any uh, mi's recent mi's we ask patient not to do this uh, procedure so common problems what we see it is not every time possible that patient will blow for 5 to 6 seconds so inadequate blowing is there lack of blast efforts during exhalation patient ko jo force se humne bola wo force se nahi kiya patient starts very slow humne bola now you start patient gets starts very slow sleep seal nahi hote patient many a times cough cough during the blow patient do teen saans ek saath le leta hai uh, 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 rest is procedure poor postures and all we have to maintain this parametry uh, parameters a lot, a lot there is regular calibration is required to get the accurate result uh, auto calibration is there but regularly calibrations we also do uh, it is performed by 3 liter syringe there is a long syringe where uh, we attach to the spirometer and we do the calibration this is a, uh, this, is a, this is just for good cleanliness and uh, maintaining the accuracy of the equipment trouble shooters we had seen the normal graph here now these are poor efforts let no patient may only 2 seconds tak blow kiya inadequate efforts slow start patient should have started from here the red line patient started late so these are common things that we see again uh, stop early patient started but yahi par stop ho gaya yahan pe unhone kar diya complete slow start patient we told to start but started very slow here during the procedure during exhalation patient is coughing see that pattern when patient is coughing you can easily identify this is not acceptable extra bit started fir rok diya fir saas liya extra bit again so these are these are the commonest uh, thing that i wanted to um, tell you from the spirometry these are the normal uh, things that we have to understand from our uh, day to do practice thank you thank you very much for your patient listening hope uh, i made some effort for you to understand the spirometer the uh, the there are many other parameters in the spirometer but just to summarize fev1 fvc and the ratio these are the gold uh, standards as we see spirometers if you see uh, the first one uh, i don't know the visibility of the image yes the first uh, graph if you see yeah 
Yes. Now, yes. So this is the normal spirometry. This is the reading or this is the report that we get. FVC, FEV1, FEV1 by FVC, 25, 75, the small airways, P mixed field loop, FET. These are many parameters here. But our basic parameter of understanding is these first three ones. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Any questions, you're all welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. If you have any queries, please put it in on uh, in chat box. Sir will definitely answer them all. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your thought-provoking lecture, sir. It has definitely added depth in our understanding. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank now you. I request our chairperson, Dr. Ramesh Wagmare, sir, to put his valuable comments. Sir, your comments undoubtedly contribute a lot to our PGs. Towards you, sir. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. Uh, Thank you for giving me the chairperson of today's sessions. Uh, I congratulate Dr. Akash sir, who gave us a very valuable information about the spirometry. Uh, I think our PGs and Nidan persons can get uh, good knowledge about this uh, uh, new technique and diagnostic tools because updatation is a very essential nowadays. So as per uh, your uh, uh, presentations. Uh, I think there is no need to explain more about your knowledge because you are an expert and you are a very uh, thorough, giving us thorough knowledge to us. Uh, I think uh, today's uh, session, near about 100 uh, participants participated for uh, getting a knowledge. Updatation of knowledge is very essential nowadays for diagnostics and pinpointedly di diagnosis. Uh, this is a gold standard. Uh, as per uh, your uh, presentations, uh, I'm again congratulate and thank you all of you uh, being uh, presenting and getting a knowledge of this uh, spirometry uh, diagnostic uh, tools and interpretation of the COPD because airway obstruction, how and where it formed, it can give us a, a good knowledge for a diagnostic uh, technique. Thank you, giving my uh, pre uh, presidentship of today's session. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, there is one query in chat box. It is regarding what are the contraindications for performing spirometry? As I told in my um, talk that uh, a recent uh, MI, a stroke patient, a recent surgery where, where I have had uh, abdominal surgery, in that cases, you have to avoid the spirometry because you have to forcibly blow for five to six seconds. So when you are blowing uh, in the uh, uh, post-surgery surgical patient, it becomes very difficult. And in post-MI patients, this can, uh, because the patient can have syncopes many a times. So we have to avoid this uh, spirometry when uh, you have this kind of diagnosis. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Again, yes, one question you. from same Vaishali, madam, sir. Can we differentiate cardiac asthma and respiratory asthma by spirometry? Uh, slightly difficult because we have to have an X-ray also together with us. But yes, we can easily understand whether patient will respond to the bronchodilators or not. Because many a times when a breathless patient comes, yes, you are, you are very right, we don't know whether it's a respiratory patient or a cardiac patient. On the history, history is utmost important here. Curve, what type of curve that is, orthopnea is there or not, we have to first differentiate between the symptoms only. Once from the symptoms we understand, the patient is mostly going to the cardiac uh, side, we can have a little bit diagnosis on our, in our hand for, first of all, and then comes the spirometry. If patient has a bronchodilator response, then we can consider adding bronchodilators to him. So uh, it definitely helps in the diagnosis. Thank you, sir. Again, yes, sir, one. Can you can you can you just explain that uh, inspiratory and expiratory loop uh, in uh, in context to residual wall? See, see, if you see this graph here uh, that is shown in the picture, this is this is a flow volume loop. This is a complete flow volume loop. This is the upper one is the expiration. 
patient has started expiring means patient has started blowing 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 till here and this is the inspiratory loop so this is a complete flow volume loop and here only we have to look after fev1 and fvc so flow volume loop expiration 6 second expiration and the ratios this all explains our spirometry okay thank you sir again one question from sandeep lahilekar sir Spirometry supportive investigation other than photoplethysmography? Yeah, plethysmography is done where we cannot do our routine spirometry, where we have to have smaller airways. Um, for example, in some of the patients, we cannot do this uh, spirometry that we desire. See, a patient is having already on uh, interstitial lung disease, patient is already on oxygen. We cannot ask this patient to blow out in the spirometers. Then, we, then the role of body plethysmography comes, where we can have a finer aspects of other airways, that is, a smaller airways can be seen, the smaller airways, reversibility can be seen there, the ABG wise, for example, in the blood gases, how we see the PCO2 and PO2 values, in that cases, plethysmography gives an additional support to us, where uh, other uh, smaller, uh, what you say, airways can be identified, and there we come uh, what we say, a plethysmography or a blood gas exchange uh, that we see on the ABGs. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable guidance. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, I will uh, request Dr. Priyanka Varpe, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Ashwin Rural Ayurvedic College, Manchi, Sangamner, to deliver a vote of thanks. Ma'am, towards you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Priyanka Basai Varpe from ARAC Manchi Hill, Sangamne. I am honored to be here today to give a vote of thanks on behalf of the organizing committee for this Nedaniki 2024 webinar. I would like to begin by thanking our speaker named Dr. Akash Balki for their informative and engaging pres presentation. This presentation valuable to us. And I am sure that everyone who attended has learned a great deal. I would also like to thank our organizing committee and President Dr. Subhash Vage sir for inviting such experienced and knowledgeable speaker for student lecture. I would like to thank to our organization introduction member Dr. Darshana Ubale and I would like to thank our RVPJ chairman person Dr. Ramesh Vagmare. Also, I thanks to our uh, webinar coordination Dr. Uh, Amle ma'am. Finally, I would like to thank all of you who attend today's webinar and I hope that you have found it to be informative. I am truly grateful for the support of everyone involved in making this webinar a success. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank now you. I uh, re thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Subhash Vage, sir, our president and organizing secretary, RBPG organization, to conclude the webinar by adding his valuable thoughts. Sir, I request you to conclude the webinar. Thank you, madam. Uh, first of all, let me express my gratitude towards uh, my friend, Dr. Akash Balki, sir. A uh, few days back, I uh, after the uh, Diagnocon. Uh, I was suffering from a viral illness and I uh, I started feeling shortness of breath and I went there. I, uh, I met uh, sir with Dr. Uh, Avinash Radke sir. And uh, sir had asked me to do spirometry absolutely, uh, and it was normal. And sir assured me that uh, it, it will be all right within a few days and I was okay accordingly. Uh, I was associated with sir uh, from the day, uh, days of care. And I also conducted uh, Sir's lecture there uh, in the Saturday CME. I still remember long back. And uh, I just requested Sir, uh, when I met uh, the Sir last time, I requested Sir to uh, come on your, on your platform and uh, deliver a lecture on for our students. Just uh, Sir, uh, sir I mean, within yeah. seconds, Sir readily accepted the invitation and today he is uh, uh, with us. So I thank uh, thank you very much, sir, for in, uh, accepting our invitation uh, readily, and you are here, uh, you are sparing your valuable time. Thank you, thank you very much, and it was wonderful lecture. It was very informative, and I hope our PGs 
uh, who, are, who are who are pursuing their career in diagnostic procedures they are uh, they are more wiser in interpreting the uh, spirometry and uh, understanding the spy, uh, uh, importance of spirometry in uh, mm -hmm. diagnosing the specific to pulmonary diseases so i thank everyone uh, for to, uh, today's um, uh, uh -huh. webinar uh, especially the Deepali Amle Madam, who is doing uh, co coordinating this uh, webinar wonderfully, and, our, uh, and that of the Darshan of Bari Madam, who had um, introduced our organization uh, very uh, very nicely. So, thanking you uh, once in all. Thank you very much, and uh, we can conclude now. Thank you, Dr. Vaghe, for your kind words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.